Hey everyone, in this video we're taking a look at a beautiful minimalist tiny house that's just 23 feet long by 10 feet wide. At 230 square feet it was designed for one to two people to live in. And what's really unique about this tiny house is that it can easily be attached and detached from a trailer which offers several advantages over a traditional tiny house on wheels. In this video we're going to meet up with Daniel from True North Tiny Homes who's going to give us a full tour and he's also going to talk about the benefits of building it separate from a trailer. So let's go check it out. We started with the height of our trailer and then made the far point of our soffit be at the 13 foot 6 for road legal and then just at a 112 slope to wherever we ended up in the bathroom. So this is the nest and it is 10 by 23 on the outside making it 230 square feet. We started with a door at the end just to do something a little bit different. It does necessitate a hallway all the way through the home so it does kind of cut things up a little bit but we did the best we could with with that and it created this really cool front porch. The kitchen is actually 10 feet long with as few cabinets as possible because the less cabinets the more cost effective it is. So we have two 36 inch banks of drawers to get as much kitchen drawer space as possible and it just creates a really nice space flanking the sink. We went with black windows, so we countered that with the black sink and faucet, the same thing in the bathroom, and it just gives this really nice detail against it. So turning around here, looking back at the door, this is where our appliances are supposed to go. They're not all in yet. We have the microwave. It's also a convection oven microwave so that you can get both out of it without taking up oven space. There's supposed to be a two burner cooktop cut into here, but we don't have that yet, so we don't know what size to cut the hole. But some people have looked at this and said, well, why don't we just use a hot plate that we can just plug in? And then the fridge is supposed to go here. We have huge closet space in this one, maybe a little bigger than we would have needed, but it does give you huge storage capabilities here. The amount of storage in here is just incredible, especially for only one or two people. A uh, cool thing to note though is that we do have the HRV unit up at the top of this closet taking up some room. The HRV unit is great for exchanging inside air with outside air. Now, I'm the type of guy who's just going to open all the windows anyways and exchange it that way, but if you do keep it all closed, and especially in the winter time as well, because we don't have air movement with the in-floor heating here, that does give us a lot of fresh air. The other thing is, it's one of the necessities to meet the Ontario Building Code to make this legal. The desk is probably bigger than it needs to be as well, but this is just the amount of space that was left between the kitchen and the bathroom, so it just made sense to just put a countertop in right across. We've pre-drilled holes for your computer to be able to plug in underneath. And then the space didn't look quite right until we went to a 50 inch TV. I know it's probably bigger than most tiny homes, but I love it. And you could totally turn this into a dining space as well with a couple more chairs across here. So this is the living room, but it's also the bedroom because we don't have a bedroom in here. This house was designed for one person to live comfortably, but it's very easy to pull this couch into a queen size bed so that two can stay here. The couch is quite generously sized, but it's because it's a bed sideways. So it's as easy as it gets. We just pull the bed forward. The back side of the couch actually folds down for the other half of the mattress. And now we've got a queen size mattress here. And before that flips down, that's where all the storage for all the bedding is. So you do have to make your bed every day, but you gain the ability of having a smaller house to live with and clean up. So we like to use as big windows as possible because that's what makes a tiny home feel bigger. And we love using these awning windows. To prove a point, I left this open all weekend and we had torrential downpours this weekend just to prove a point that rain does not come in the house when you leave your windows open, so you don't need to shut them. We do have the ceiling fan in here because we don't have air conditioning, although with the heat wave we've been having lately, I've thought some people might not be comfortable with just a fan. So there is the ability to add a ductless mini split on top of the TV and put air conditioning in here, of course. Another cool thing to note in the living room here is this awesome barn door that we did out of the same shoshugi bond that we have on the outside siding just to kind of bring that inside and strategically it hides our electrical panel. Welcome to our massive bathroom. Now the thing about the Ontario building code is that the space for the main living area has to be 13.5 square meters but then they just say and you need a bathroom. So because in order to get that space we went with a 10 foot width this is just how much room we needed to get a vanity and a toilet beside each other. So you end up with this massive space. This 
Tiny Home is connected to the services everywhere, so this is just a regular toilet that connects to a regular sewer, and we've got regular water service coming in, and just a 24 inch vanity to finish that side off. We love to do a really fancy shower always. So in here we have hexagonal black tiles in the back, again some of that black accents going on and, and with the, uh, the shower there. Another thing to note is the exit to the HRV, which is right in the shower. So it's also pulling all the humidity out of the most humid spot of the house to kind of clean up the air in here. We always like to have the biggest window possible in a bathroom. I mean, obviously not as big as in the living room, but as big of a window as possible to get some airflow. In here is the mechanical room. We have our combination washer dryer at the bottom. And then the only thing that basically fits on top here is our boiler system. And this boiler runs the in-floor heating as well as the hot water out of your faucets. So we've decided to switch our main heating source on our units to be in-floor hydronic heating. And the reasoning being some of the first ones that we built, especially the ones on, that are on trailers, it gets pretty cold in the winter time on the floor. So even though the ductless mini split that are on the walls are making the ambient air temperature seem fine, your feet are still cold because the heat never falls far enough to actually warm the floor up. So just because of the Canadian winters, we've just switched to doing this and it warms from the bottom up. The other great benefit of it is it also warms everything that's touching the floor. So your furniture and your cabinets also get warm. So it maintains the heat in the building a lot better. One of the downsides though, is even though this one is being connected 100% to the grid and you think, well, then we might as well just run everything off of electric. Electric water heaters do not run hot enough to kill certain bacteria. Now that normally that's not a problem because you're just heating water that is coming out of your tap and it doesn't have time for the bacteria to grow. But because the hydronic heating is a closed loop, that same liquid is in there for years on end. And so the bacteria starts to grow. So the only way we can kill that is by going to a propane boiler that heats that bacteria up hot enough. And so for that reason, we have propane in this home specifically only for the boiler. This house is not on a trailer. It goes on a trailer to transport it to site, and then we jack the house up, drive our trailer out, and put the house down on a foundation. It does a few things. One is that it's actually illegal to live in a, a vehicle in Ontario, and a vehicle is anything with wheels. Another cool factor about not building on a trailer is that we don't have wheel wells to build around. And so this enables us to just build a, a square box and it's, it's a whole lot easier. Another advantage is, is that the weakest point of the longevity of a tiny home is the trailer. Most trailers are built out of steel and that's going to start to rust out being that close to the ground all the time or if you're moving it all the time, that's going to rust out faster than all of the rest of the building materials. So we use a helical pier system and we drill six piers in the ground for this particular model and then we place the house right down on those six piers and those are permanent. Now an additional neat thing about that is it only costs us about $2,500 to put those six piers in but it costs us at least $7,500 to build a trailer. So it's actually cheaper to just reuse our trailer over and over again and put them on foundations. We had a steel bracket engineered by our engineer and the part that you don't see is actually a lot bigger and it bolts onto the beams that we've created the platform of the house with and has big bolts in it holding everything together. And the outside of that, the nice finished black part that we see, we can hook four regular stabilizer jacks on. Only we like to use the 5,000 pound hand crank jacks that you would see on the tongue of a regular trailer. And with four people, we can simultaneously jack the house all the way up and we bring it about three feet off the ground to drive our trailer out and then bring it right down to where we are now which is about six inches above the ground. On that same steel bracket system we also put big D-rings and so when it's on the trailer that's what we're using to strap it down without having to put a strap all the way around the whole house. We might put one of those on as well just to meet the number of pounds of strapping that we need but it's not that's not what's holding on the trailer. So we created this as a prototype for a new not-for-profit called Creating Roots for Former Foster Youth. About 50% of foster youth when they turn 18 and age out of the program become homeless. So the idea behind the not-for-profit is to create some homes in tiny homes for some of those foster youth to be able to have a home to live in. 
One of the key guidelines that we try to follow when we're designing tiny homes is that we want to be able to build it in a way that you don't have to move stuff to get to other stuff, but still have this feeling of openness and freedom. And it's light and it's airy, and this is a triadic color scheme and was specifically designed to have a calming effect on people so that when they come in they feel safe and they feel secure and can de-stress after a day of work. If you want to find out more about True North Tiny Homes, I'll put a link to their website in the description below. Also, be sure to subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.